What's up everybody, Rudy with Vantage Mindset where I talk to you about life and business strategies just to put you on top and keep you up there. So in this video today, we're actually gonna do a deep dive into my path and showing you all the obstacles and everything that I learned along the way, all the failures that I have had in hopes to hopefully encourage you and show you that look, it doesn't matter how many times you've tried and failed something, things can work out. And I went from literally making like $2,000 a month as a waiter, like less than five years ago, to now doing, you know, a million dollars worth of business in a year. And I wanna show you guys the differences of my life and what's really changed. So if we take it back to the beginning, I started off, the two main things that I would start out with in the business world, and mind you, this is just about my business life, not anything personal, but I would consider baseball a form of business because there's structure to it. There's a coach, which this is the same as a boss. You have employees or, you know, teammates. And so I've always just kind of approached baseball that way for some reason. But yeah, it actually, you know, ended up helping me out a lot. So get into baseball, played that all the way through college. So we don't have to go back and retract anything. Played through college. But through my high school years, that's when the workplace started to come into play. So I grew up in California. So baseball, we play all year round. The weather's good enough to play the whole year. I was playing on the high school team. My dad was also forcing me to play travel baseball. So that'd be like weekends, you know, off season stuff. And I was doing both at the same time. I had a girlfriend at the time that I was with for years, and so we were together a lot. I also had to get a job because my parents didn't have money. I grew up in poverty. We grew up in, in the hood in Stockton, California. War zone, streets of the gangs, and you know, this, that, and the fourth, no stop story. But anyways, I also learned through that process, you know, like I said, growing up in the hood, they're street smarts. And because everybody I knew that was out there was either dealing drugs or gang affiliated, you know, right in that world, I learned a lot of street smarts. And with the street smarts, you learn how to apply that kind of stuff to business. You learn how to read people. You learn how to pay attention to if people is, are trying to do you dirty, trying to undercut you. So all these experiences that I had, you know, looking back, especially now, I could reshape them and reframe them to make them make sense for me and of how I learned. And I was just listening to Alex Hormozzi. One of his videos, he was just talking about how when we have bad experiences, they're actually some of the greatest opportunities for us to grow. For example, like if you have shitty parents, well, then you know exactly how you don't want a parent. And had you not experienced that, maybe you'd never know that. And then maybe you would have made those same mistakes that your parents made with you. And so it's all about perspective in that sense. But let me get back to my story. My first job, okay, mind you, I was doing all this baseball, a girlfriend, all this stuff. My first job was a dishwasher at a pizza parlor. That's a very humbling position. I think that's, that's an entry point for a lot of people who, especially those who grow up in poverty with parents who didn't necessarily amount to much but yeah that was me and I made the most of it when I got in there I wasn't there just to go through the motions and make money I'm the type my mind I want to be the best at whatever I do that's just how I'm wired it's not coming from a competitive place to break anybody down actually I like getting better by lifting others up because if I could push them to be better and I just want to be better than that we all win I was a very humble, timid kid growing up that was forced to mentally be the best. And I had to produce those same results too. You know, but I take this back because whatever your story is, if you're here listening, it doesn't matter. It could be completely different than mine. What you'll see at the end is the main secret of what I do is I just look back at my life, give my mistakes, all that kind of my, my trial and errors, just give them new meanings that work for me, that benefit me. It's just a new perspective. Like we have the ability to do it just like that. So yeah, I'm working through high school, play baseball, dishwasher, get promoted. And I'm going through that for a while until I get out. My next job, I actually ended up with my buddy that was on my baseball team in high school. His dad owned a landscaping company. So I got into landscaping, learning how to cut yards, weed eat, you know, do all that kind of stuff, edge. That job was cool. That was just temporary though. Um, it was easy to fill in. But after that, I went to junior college. And in junior college, you know, I was kind of still just making it through. Life didn't really change for me in the workplace until I got to my four-year college, which was out in Nebraska, which moved me all the way out here. Mind you, I'm going through this whole process of dealing with trial and error, having, you know, it hard as a child, strict, uh, hustling, grinding 24 seven. And then I move high schools. Not only do I move high schools, but after high school and after junior college, I moved to a whole new state and uproot my life. But my whole point is, once I got into that high school, junior college, college range, I was trying so many different things. I just, I wanted to be successful. I wanted to make money. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. 
So I got into a bunch of different things. I got into Frank Kearns, like email marketing. I wanted to get into SMMA. I built a Shopify store, an Amazon store. I got all the way up to the point of getting my realtor's license. I just didn't take the test. I was just training with my aunt to become a realtor, or not a realtor, real estate appraiser. And none of these things worked out. And so I'm working my way and working my way, spending all of the money that I save up. Like I literally don't buy myself anything. I buy stuff from Walmart, just cheap budget and throw all my money into my education and trying to get business right. But nothing was working out. I tried literally everything. But once I got to college, I took a job at a bank and I was doing this my last year. I had uh, to do five years of college to get my bachelor's degree. My fifth year, I wasn't playing baseball anymore. So I was just working. Worked at a bank, it was, it was nice. It was a little bank, felt professional. I had to dress up, suit tie every day. So it was nice as far as having my subconscious feel professional. But in this whole process, I'm reading books. Like right after I graduated college, I got a loan for $2,500 to buy a Tony Robbins seminar ticket. It was a four day event. I paid for that, I paid for my flight to get out there and I paid for my hotel. So I'd saved literally everything I had, took a loan to get here. I spent so much time into self-development, uh, learning about how the mind works, about how we have control over our thoughts, and we can change our emotional state. We can do so much great in this life, uh, attract anything that we want, the person, the job, the lifestyle, anything you could think of really, it's all up to us, it's, and it all starts in here. But let me get back to you. So I'm going through all of this, took that job. I graduate after college, so I move to a new city, and when I do that, I come across, I meet this friend and she's like, hey, well, one of my friends has a restaurant she's opening and they're looking for servers. Would you like to work? And in this time, I'm going through my Tony Robbins life coaching program. So I'm getting certified as a life coach, which I did back in 2017. So what, seven years ago, I've been a life coach now. And it was one of the best jobs that I could, could have gotten into for the fact that I dealt with people every day. And you know, when you're in a restaurant, you're getting all types of people, all different speeds, all different ages, races, religions tonalities, you know, mad, sad, happy, babies crying, this, that, and the fourth. So you're literally, when you have intent of wanting to learn how to work with people, I went into every single table saying, hey, I'm gonna make sure they leave happy and satisfied. If they come in and they're not happy and satisfied, I'm gonna make sure that I change the whole environment for them, the whole mood of the night. And I got great at it, you know. Tony Robbins taught me so much. The life coaching program that he did with uh, Chloe Madonis was absolutely amazing. Everything I learned about family therapy and myself and dealing with others. So, but let me fast forward now because I want to wrap this up quick just to show you. So I stopped working as a waiter because I was like, I'm ready to become an entrepreneur. I, I need to show people I can start a business on my own, grow it. So now I can start consulting, working with people, helping them do what I did. So. It was back in 2019, just a few months before COVID came out, I actually was starting up a cleaning company because I had no money. I was 25,000 in debt, making $2,000 a month, living with my grandma, and I needed to start a business. So I ran into cleaning, and cleaning is not attractive, but it was the thing that I could do that I could pay for at the time. And I'm like, well, if people make money here, let me just prove to myself that I could make money. When I get the money, I'll choose what to do later. Fast forward. My first three years, I made a million dollars and I probably kept about 350,000 of that net to myself. And then in year four, I did a million alone in one year. And so it's been a great process during that whole time too. In my first year in business, I lost my younger brother and that was the hardest thing. Like that was the most pivotal moment in my life that really shaped me. I could have chosen to let that ruin my life, but I knew that there's people that lose siblings, loved ones in their lives, and they do something great afterwards. And I couldn't understand why. I just knew that I was gonna, I was gonna be that person that figured it out. So fast forward now, currently, present today, I have my cleaning business. I coach people. I do speeches. I have a cryo business. We do targeted cryotherapy. I'm partnered, I have my YouTube channel, which you guys are here. I have a digital course where I teach people how to build commercial cleaning businesses. And not only that, but just become entrepreneurs in general. And so if you're at a place where you're stuck and you can't see the future, it's fine. Don't freak out, don't worry. Just click the link in my description, book a 60 minute call with me. I will go through everything with you guys, answer any question, help you come up with a plan that you can run with in the future. And it's free. So 
If you choose to not act on it, that's on you. I'll be waiting for you guys on that call. Until then, see you next time. Peace. Us too, you know, we apply this stuff to ourselves every day and we're not perfect, you know, but we strive. I want to say that to the folks that are listening too. Rudy is the epitome of that. 30 years old, I mean, this dude, has, he just has such a, um, um, a fire for life, a passion. And you're not one of those ones who sit on the sidelines.